So this PC you see in the background in nearly every video is a Ryzen system and I built this on the channel about three months ago and today I want to talk about what it's been like to use this thing not only for productivity and making videos for you guys but also for gaming over this time period and talk about all the benefits and if there are any little pet peeves I'll talk about them as well. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, this is Brian and first off, Ryzen 7. This is the 1800X, I've clocked this to 4 GHz. Now I'm using this coupled with 64 GB of DDR4 memory. And for my personal rig, I use two hard drives, two 3TB Seagates in RAID 1 and also 0. So I partition the drives off, I have a RAID 0 portion for all my games and I have a lot of games so I need a lot of storage and I like it to have it faster than a single hard drive and also SSD space costs a lot. So RAID 0 is still a viable option for SATA 3 drives. However, for SSDs, I use two at the moment. I have an NVMe M.2, it's a 500 gigabyte. I use this as a scratch drive for editing videos and 4K videos can get quite large. So a drive like this performs consistent and it is really good. And then for my main storage and my main boot drive, I use a one terabyte SSD from Corsair as well. The one to that main question of have there been any problems in the last three months? And not really, I mean, there has been some minor quirks. The first thing I can think of is my Elgato capture card, which I run to all my benchmark PCs. That does have some intermediate problems where it does cut out and sometimes it just straight up doesn't work. I actually recorded some video footage where I've never seen this before. It's still giving out the signal to the monitor, but it's still flickering inside Windows. So there are some compatibility issues with the Elgato capture card, but for the most part, it does work well most of the time. Also on a really rare occasion, I will get a USB port that will cause the computer to crash and then I'll have to restart. And also probably my last pet peeve with it is that sometimes it does take long time to boot if you are using a RAID configuration like I am. Now besides those things, Ryzen 7 has been extremely awesome for using as a workstation. You can just do anything. It's 8 cores, 16 threads. So you can render a video and then multitask and do other things while that video is rendering and not notice practically any slowdowns at all. And also on that note, the gaming performance is very good. It's not as good as a 7700K, but on that note, I do play at 1440p ultra wide. So I do need graphical power more so than CPU power. And Ryzen 7 does provide a really good balance. So what about going from a 6800K that was clocked to 4.3 GHz to a 7700K that was clocked to 5 GHz, then to Ryzen which is clocked at 4 GHz. Though when it comes down to it, the applications that I need this thing for, the Ryzen 7 1700 in my opinion does perform slightly better than the 6800K and also the 7700K in the Adobe Premiere Pro suite, at least in Premiere Pro when it comes to final render times and also dropping in videos from your scratch drive to the actual program itself. The Ryzen 7 is very fast. Though here's where the best part comes in with the Ryzen 7 CPUs. Now, although I do use a Ryzen 1800X, which is a review sample I'll sent out, I all the time recommend the Ryzen 7 1700. And a lot of times when I talk about Ryzen 7, I'm always just talking about Ryzen 1700 because it's such good value for money. If I had absolutely no tech in my living room and I had to go out and buy a CPU or motherboard combo, Ryzen 7 1700 and a B350 motherboard would be where it was at for me. As you can currently get this CPU for around $300 or even less, and that's huge for an 8-core 16-threaded CPU that goes to 4 GHz, and it also has really good IPC. I think AMD has done everyone a favor with the Ryzen lineup, and they provide exceptionally good value for money. And of course, months later with BIOS updates and also patches in Windows, Ryzen is now performing extremely well. I'm not noticing any hiccups in games. I'm not noticing any performance numbers that are odd. And also it's rock solid when it comes to doing a lot of the workstation stuff. There are those pet peeves I mentioned before, but really after three months, I'm glad to say that Ryzen is a solid choice for people who want to use it as a workstation. And I can highly recommend it, especially if you are a value conscious consumer. Though I know a big question coming in from here is what about changing over to X399 or X299 from Intel? Are you going to do that, Brian? And the answer is maybe. I mean, honestly, I don't need to change over. My workflow at the moment, I'm really comfortable with. And I think that's the question you have to ask yourself as a tech enthusiast. At what level are you comfortable with your gear? I know, for instance, when I was using the 7700K for my workflow, as opposed to the Ryzen 7 1700, there wasn't much of a difference. There wasn't a world of difference. One did slightly better in gaming, the other did better in productivity. I wouldn't, for example, be only getting out two videos on a 7700K setup versus a Ryzen setup where I'd be getting out three videos. That wouldn't be the case. I'd still be getting out three videos a week 
on both PCs. And I think if I switch to X299 or X399, I don't think my workflow would be increased that much more. I think I'd maybe save a few minutes here and there. So another thing I want to touch on is the temperatures with Ryzen. Has it been hard to handle or has it been a hard CPU to keep under control? I mean, I've got this thing at four gigahertz all day, every day at 1.4 volt. Now I keep this under control with a Corsair H110 liquid cooler. And honestly, even at the lowest fan speeds, this thing just never gets hot. I can touch the radiator at any time, even when I'm rendering out a big video or playing games for long hours. And the CPU just remains really cool all the time. And I think in ways this is to thank for the fact that AMD soldered the IHS to the die, unlike some of the competitors. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to hit that like button and also consider subscribing if you like the content and hit that notification bell if you want to get the video notifications instantly. And also the case I'm using is the Air 740 from Corsair. It is just such a good case in terms of airflow and also low noise. And also it looks really cool as well. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.